Okay, so Motion Perfect 4. Um, it's Motion Perfect 4 because obviously we've been through some generations of this. Um, motion, when I started 22 years ago with Trio, we were just launching Motion Perfect 1, which ran under Windows 3.11 a long, long time ago. Um, we've been through various iterations. But Motion Perfect 4, it will connect to all of the present generation controllers. Um, so the, the, the MC4 range, 5 range, the 6 range. Uh, will all work with Motion Perfect 4. If you go back to the old motion, uh, MC2s, MC2XX uh, controls we had, you need the earlier Motion Perfect 2 for that, uh, which, which runs over a serial connection rather than Ethernet. So this has all the tools we want to use, and I'll take you through a, a few of them in a minute, but first we've got to try and get it connected. So it runs through Ethernet to the controller. Um, if you connect your PC up to a, a network with uh, what's called DHCP server, which in a, in a house could just be the router on the internet in a, in a big office or a big factory. There's some dedicated server that does this. It feeds out IP addresses to anything connected. Um, then your PC is quite happy because when you buy a PC and just connect it up, it, it, it expects to get this IP address given to it uh, remotely from the server. Our controllers all have fixed IP addresses, so that they they all come with the same one ending in 250. We can change that if we want to, but that's the initial condition. So if we if we connect that up and we're on an office network, that's fine. That will, that will work and we'll be able to, to go with that. Assuming that your office network actually uses this subnet mask. Some customers' factories will have a different set of digits here. And in that case, you've got to reprogram the controller to what's called that subnet. So the first three numbers have got to match what the whole factory network has. And the last number would be possibly be allocated by some kind of IT department. Um, that does actually offer a little bit of a problem in that to change it, you kind of have to connect to it. So you have to connect to it on that subnet first, and then you can go in and reprogram it. Um, it is possible to do it via an SD card, so you can actually put the new IP address on an SD card, plug it in there and power it up. So there are methods to do it without connection. But um, in our particular case, we're going to stick with that. Our, our office has this subnet, so we're okay. In fact, most default, uh, if you go into your, your house internet system you know, on the router, you'll see that subnet's very common. Okay, now what we've got here though is actually, as I'm looking around, no connections at all because I didn't bring any ethernet cables in. So we'll have to organize that in a minute. But what you're going to have here is simply either a switch or not a switch, but a direct connection between the PC and the controller. And to do that, we need to set a fixed IP address in our PC, because it's not being given one by a network. Okay? And to do that, we go into, depending on the Windows version you've got, but you need to go into your change adapter options part of the network setting, choose your Ethernet network on there, then choose, this goes down a few different uh, paths here. So choose Internet Protocol version 4 and click Properties and then you'll find that it says obtain an IP address automatically which is the one where it gets it on the server. We need to change that to a fixed one and type in the IP address we're going to use. Okay. It just needs to be something um, that's not the same as the controller. So you, you cannot put 250 here. The, the two ends of the link have to be different. But you have a choice of over 200 different numbers, so you can either choose one randomly or, or uh, as I say, sometimes you might get issued one by your IT department. But, but here, there's, uh, there's no IT involved, you just, just can put it what you want. Um, you cannot use zero and you cannot use 255. When you start Motion Perfect, then, then you need to actually say to Motion Perfect what the IP address of the target controller is. And that's where you go there, connection settings. Um, so controller connection settings. Uh, and then you put in here the IP address of the controller that you're going to connect to. So that then should have got us both ends of the link. And we do our connection. And then we end up uh, able to use some of the tools in, in Motion Perfect. So the different parts of Motion Perfect itself, we obviously need a programming tool because we want to write programs. Um, we're dealing with the basic language, so we have a Trio Basic Editor. Um, 
it's fully functional. It's got lots of things in that you can have, like uh, breakpoints. You can step through programs. You can auto indent. So familiar with indenting, where we, we have like a four next loop on it. Then you, you just indent what's inside it, just to make it clearer, so you can see what's uh, what's inside that. So rather than having everything just lined up in, on the left hand side, you can actually see as the branches go in and out. You can actually visualize what the program's doing. And that, that's done for you automatically. There's an auto indenting system to format that. Um, the buttons up here, you've got your, your like copy, paste, etc. But you've got also um, a start program, step through program. Uh, and if, if it's running, then there would be a blue button there, blue square, which means to stop the program. We've also got control panel, which is on the left hand side. Um, that effectively tells us what programs we have and whether the status of them, whether they're running or not, and whether they're compiled or not. You see they've all got a green tick next to them. That means they're all compiled. If they're not compiled, there would be a question mark um, to, to show that that particular program uh, is written but not compiled yet. You've also got other options on the control panel, such as being able to open up axes and, and, and look at the memory of the controller. Now, on this... Um, particular slide we've also got on, on the right hand side I've put uh, a copy of the project in the in, in the PC uh, and what I'm trying to get over here is the fact that in your controller itself you've got all your programs there with their names and also most perfect keeps a copy of it on the PC in a folder so it's not like a system where you write the programs in the PC and then download them in the controller you're actually writing the programs live inside the controller itself so every time you type a line in, it actually goes into the controller, and the PC just maintains a backup. And in fact, all the compiling is done in the controller as well. So Motion Perfect itself is just giving you a very nice featured front end on the activity in the controller. And it's one of the powerful features of our system, is that if you, if you take a controller, and you've written all the programs, and you put it on the machine, if someone comes along 10 years later, they can connect Motion Perfect to it, having no copy of the program of their, of their own, and upload a copy, and they can actually work on it. They don't have to go and find where, I'm using old terminology here, but the floppy disk is stored somewhere, or, or the, the files are stored on the server. You've actually got a copy of the program source code in the controller. Okay. okay. Can you configure it so if you don't have the source code, if you want to protect it? If you want to protect it, you can encrypt it. There's an encryption system. So you can hide the source code. Uh, but the source code must be there for the whole sort of thing to work. It, it, it's got to have it there because it actually goes through a process of compiling it. If you if you have a program in there and you just go to run it, it, it compiles it first and then runs it. All the compilation is done in the controller, and that's another very powerful feature as well. Is that you only have to worry about this number here when it comes to versions. The, the, the actual version number on the controller is the important one because that. That's what's doing the compiling and running of your code. The version of Motion Perfect, it doesn't matter. You, you could be connecting Motion Perfect 4.1, 4.2, 4.3. It won't matter at all. Your, your, your programs inside the controller will all run exactly the same if, if the controller firmware is the same. Have they compiled automatically at runtime? Or yeah, whatever? they are. Yeah. You have the option to compile it yourself. You know, there's a compile button in, in, in the... Um, in, in the editor, um, but really you don't use that if, if, if there was some error. So if you tried to run it and it said, oh, problem, I can't, I can't run it, then you would press the compile button and it would give you a list of the, the error lines and what the errors are. Okay, um, the project on the, on the PC uh, has a kind of couple of special features. Uh, one of them is that uh, the name of the folder must be the same as the name of those files down there at the bottom. So that's training effect 2018. Um, if they're not the same, then it's not a trio project anymore. So if my copy on my motion perfect, it's going to be different because you edited it in the meantime. So it does this project check when you when you when you go into the synchronized synchronized mode. Um, and you can see there the, the main is showing up as being different. It just tells you which ones are not not uh, not the same. Now we could uh, we can make some choices here. We've got choices of these buttons. We can either use the program on the controller and say, okay, I, I know that my colleague last night 
was working on this machine and made some changes and I accept the changes are good and I'm going to keep those so I'll just copy them across into my PC. Or I could say the opposite. My colleague last night made some changes which were a disaster and I'm going to copy my original program back onto the machine again. Um, in which case we're using the program for the PC. The other thing you can do is you can actually have a look. So there's an external merge tool that uh, comes with Motion Perfect. It's a bit of third party software that, uh, that just gets installed. We, we install something called WinMerge. Other merging tools, comparison tools are available. So some people might choose to use a different one. Um, but uh, so the WinMerge is there, that's the one I use anyway. So you press that magnifying glass picture there uh, to inspect it. And then WinMerge, if, you, if you're using WinMerge, will open up uh, and it will show you what the differences are. So you see there, we've got a red line that says, okay, there's an additional line been added there. Um, that print um, and uh, interestingly it's got print in lowercase which probably means it's not been compiled yet because that's one thing about the compiler uh, if, if you've got a keyword if you if you type it in lowercase when once it's recognized by the controller it will change it to uppercase so um, the print in uppercase there is actually a compiled one and the lowercase one is someone's added that to the file offline without uh, without actually having it compiled in the controller. Okay. Um, the other thing you can do, of course, with the blank controller is you can get your project on the PC and you can load the whole thing in. If you press the, the arrows there, it, it will just take them straight across. But you could change, for example, you can choose to change the project. So if I press that change button up there, I can choose a different project to load. Um, and then once I've chosen that then, so I've changed it to this thing called Rotary Cutter, I then press the, the double green arrows and uh, it will then load it across. You see it appear there. So the names have appeared on that side and they're slightly greyed out as you can see. Nothing happens until you press the synchronize button. So you can choose and mess around with what project you're going to synchronize and how you're going to synchronize it. And if you get it wrong, you can start again. Nothing happens until you press that button that says synchronize. So only when you press that will it actually load the programs across. Um, if you wanted to start a completely new project, then that central picture there is actually a button. People don't realize that, it's not too obvious. So if I press that central button there, um, I get the typical Windows dialog comes up and I can put in a new project name, uh, enter whatever I want. Uh, and then once I've done that, uh, so just go back to that, that will then basically mean I'm starting from a fresh. So in that particular case, I'd be taking an empty controller and starting completely from blank because I've decided to start a new project. There's a little thing you'll see pop up in Motion Perfect called a project status report. Um, that's really only been added because we have some applications in the pharma industry and medical use and um, uh, possibly in, in nuclear decommissioning or whatever, um, where they need more controls on, on the, what's in the controller, you know, what, what the project consists of. So this produces a report and tells you that uh, what the project name was, what the controller is, and, and any differences between the project and the controller when it was loaded. And People who make machines that have to be FDA um, approved, for example, that's the main one in the US, um, they can produce this report and say, okay, this machine definitely had this software in and here's a report that, that says it did. Um, apart from that, it's probably not a huge amount of use. Um, and you can actually turn it off. You can click that bit that says don't display the status window if you want to, if you find it annoying. 